Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the angular velocity of this green bar when it reaches its vertical position after being dropped from rest. So in order to do this, I'm going to be using energy methods, which means I'm going to be using the formula the change in mechanical energy is equal to the work done by non-conservative forces. And if you were to expand that out, you can express it into its kinetic energy components, which is the change in kinetic energy, and its potential energy components, the change in potential energy is equal to the work done by non-conservative forces. And once again, this can be split even further into its translational kinetic energy, a half m v2 squared minus v1 squared, plus its rotational kinetic energy, a half i times omega 2 squared minus omega 1 squared, and the potential energy can be split into a half k x2 squared minus x1 squared, and of course your gravitational potential energy, um, mg h2 minus h1. That's going to be equal to your work done by non-conservative forces. That is the full formula right here. Don't be scared to um, approach this problem like this, a lot of these terms will become eliminated. First of all, because we're not dealing with springs or compressible objects, that means this entire term will just be equal to zero. Just here, this ter entire term will be equal to zero. Likewise, if we choose to view this particular object as pure rotation about point O, and I should specify that point O right here is just our pin support, then our translational component will be equal to zero. We're viewing this as pure rotation about our pin just here. So this is going to be equal to zero. This is not the case if we choose any other point, I should mention. We're viewing this as pure rotation about point O. Okay, so this already simplifies down quite heavily to a half I O, we're viewing it as rotation around point O, so we're dealing with the moment of inertia around point O, times by omega 2 squared minus omega 1 squared plus mg h2 minus h1 is going to be equal to your work done by non-conservative forces. Okay, well let's talk about our work done by non-conservative forces by drawing a free body diagram. So this is what our bar looks like when it's dropped from rest. The instant it's dropped from rest, you will have a set of forces acting on it. You'll have mg here, acting downwards at the center of mass, but you'll also have, because this is a pin support, you'll have a vertical force here, which I'll call ry, and a horizontal force I'll call rx, right? I should also mention I'm using the axis x to be positive just here, and y to be positive here, right? And if we wanted to redraw this bar when it reaches in its vertical direct uh, position, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like that just here, okay? And that means that this will just be mg. I've just superimposed the uh, two free body diagrams on top of each other. Don't be confused about this. Okay, so now it becomes a matter of solving for omega 2. Um, that's because I'm going to choose this to be state 1 and I'm going to choose this to be state 2. So basically, we're trying to find the angular velocity at state 2, which means um, we're finding it for this vertical position just here, which is the point of the problem. Um, I should also mention that the work done by non-conservative forces is going to be equal to zero. That's because Rx and Ry, although they are conservative forces, they do no work because they don't actually move the pin just here. They're acting on the pin and the pin doesn't move, therefore there's no work done by the forces. Okay, so if we were to expand this out a little bit more, we're left with a half I zero, omega two squared, and omega one. Interesting, what's omega one? at our state one just here. Well, because we're given the crucial information that the bar is released from rest, that means it starts off with no angular, angular velocity, meaning that this term is just zero. And now we're going to be adding that to mg h2 minus h1, and that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, so because we've placed our axis just here, that means h1 is just going to be equal to zero. What is h2? Well, it's tempting to say that you might you might say that it's going to be negative l, right? The the le the block is of a length l, so you might think, okay, well h2 is just this distance here. You'd be wrong in saying that though. You have to measure it from your axis towards the center of mass. So this is actually our distance h2 just here. And because it's downwards by our convention, this is going to be minus l on 2. That's what's that's that's h2. It's minus L on 2. Should have written that there. It's minus L on 2. So let's actually write that below. And what are we left with? We're left with a half I. Oops. We're left with 
uh, Hoff I0 omega 2 squared plus mg times minus L on 2 plus 0 is equal to 0. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, now we just need to figure out what I0 is. Well, recall that for a, a rod that's rotating around its center of mass, that means that your moment of inertia is actually I, which is 1 on 12 ml squared. I proved that in a previous video. But using parallel axis theorem, we know that I0, which is the moment of inertia around this point, is just going to be the moment of inertia around your center of mass plus your mass of your object times the distance between your two axes squared. So if you plug that in, you're going to be left with 1 on 12 ml squared plus m times by the distance, which in this case is L on 2. It's this distance just here. So L on 2 squared. And if you were to simplify this out, what are you left with? Well, I'll tell you, you'll be left with um, 1 on 12 ml squared plus ml squared on 4, which is equal to ml squared on 3. That is your moment of inertia around the pin, the very end of the bar, just here. So that is I0 just here. Um, if, you're, if you're unfamiliar with that, I totally recommend you hit up my moment of inertia videos. So let's plug that in, and we're left with a half times by ml squared on 3 times by omega 2 squared is equal to, once you bring the mgl on 2 on the other side, you're left with mgl on 2. Cool. So let's actually quickly solve this, and what are we left with? The halves cancel out. We can bring the 3 up there. So that means ml squared omega 2 squared is equal to 3 mgl. L's cancel off. M's cancel off. And what are we left with? <clears throat> omega 2 squared is equal to 3g on L, meaning that omega 2 is equal to the square root of 3g on L. Regretfully, we're not given the direction, but we can use common sense to help us figure this out. If this bar is swinging from this position down to the vertical position, that means omega 2 is equal, is, is actually in the clockwise direction. That is our answer, guys. That's how you solve this problem using energy methods, viewing this thing as pure rotation around the pin joint.